documentation office hours. It's the 2nd of August, 2021, or if you're India Standard Time, it's the 3rd of August, 2021. Welcome. Uh, let's look at our agenda. Okay, so you should see notes. I've got 2.305 weekly change log, change log automation, 2.301, LTS change log. Upcoming events, the JDK 11 Docker transition, and then Hacktoberfest. And we're now next week. Okay, oh, and I have not started that yet. So get it done. Okay. So any other topics, Diraj, that you need to add or others? Oh, so I had uh, this topic for 2.305 weekly automation. So it's already there. So I would love to add on that. Great. Okay. All right. All right. And then this one will probably be me. Okay. All right. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Okay. And I think in terms of well yeah so let's let's take the weekly change log first uh do we do you have a question there or do we want to just review the pull request together so i have a question there so i was working on it this morning and uh, i was not able to generate it with the help of the docker oh okay uh, generation failed and what was the failure message uh, it says invalid byte sequence in US ASCII argument error. Okay, so what that means is that means someone inserted um, extended characters into the data. And that's valid, but it means we've got to change the locale to run the tool in a specific locale, in a locale that understands a wider range of characters. And so I think what we ought to do here is let's do a, an experiment. We'll do it together trying to, I think what we do is we set lang equals c dot utf8 and then run the tool so let's let's try it and see if we can make it go okay. is that all right sure okay so first things first okay i need to check out the master branch And it is current. Okay, that's good. And I had a, a system crash um, this week, so I'm I'm having to reestablish my system. So now I've got to work it out where my um, tools are. And I need to clone them again, so it'll be just a moment. Sure. Oh, and maybe it won't be more than a moment. My, my extra copy is gone. Okay, so the computer didn't restart yet. So I'll just read the directions and follow the directions. Just a minute. Let's see, whoops, that is right here. So what I need is the GitHub repository for Jenkins.io and there is a contributing file. Oh, no, no, no. It's in the change log content data change logs style guide. Now, is this where the tool is described? No.
Hmm. Okay, just a minute. I'm gonna have to go do some searching. Okay, so it's the change log generator. So let's go find that there. Okay, so the change. Ah, yes, that's it. Okay, so. Or change log generator. That's the one we need. Okay, and what it tells me is oh, oh, that's right. And I am going to need an auth token. So Diraj, I have to stop sharing my screen briefly while I generate a new authentication token. So I'll stop the share and go to my GitHub account. Sorry, this, this would have been much easier if my computer hadn't crashed last week. Okay, okay so settings. Uh, developer settings, and I need a personal access token, which has, and now I need my two-factor authentication device. And really? Come on. Okay, there we go. Now, change log generator. To make it good for 90 days. Okay, there we go. And just to confirm, my screen is not shared, right? That's right. Okay. Okay, now. All right, we need this. All right, back to sharing again. Sorry for the delay there. OK. 
Okay. That needs to download the image. And now it will do that. And then it should fail immediately because I'm in the wrong directory, but I've at least got the image. Okay. So now in the Jenkins directory, and this should fail with, huh. okay. Instructions are do this. No tags could not read. That's really strange, Diraj. Hmm. Sorry for the painful process here, Diraj. Be just a moment. That's not an issue. This should give us all the tags, which it does. Okay, there we go. Now this I would expect to fail with a complaint about, there we go, okay. So I think this is what you're seeing, invalid byte sequence in US ASCII, exactly. right? Yes. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to report what are the available locales now, how do I do that? There it is. We'll just, let's try this one. So in addition to the minus E GitHub auth equals that, we say minus E lang equals C that UTF eight. So that says, please process things. Ah, well, there goes that token recorded for life. So I'll have to throw that token away after this session. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see. The trick was Docker. Okay. So here we go. And we're going to say minus E lang equals C dot UTF dash eight. And let's try it again. Okay, good, so that's better. Okay, so the technique was, 
and we should probably put this into the changelog generator um, repository. So let's do that with a uh, pull request. So get checkout minus B um, add lang to Docker command line. Okay, so this one C dot UTF dash eight, right? C dot UTF dash eight, yes. Okay. There it is. All right. Okay, there we go. Use a UTF-8 locale to process more characters. Okay, so that, that's been submitted, that won't block us. So how about if we switch from me sharing my screen to you sharing yours and we'll have you run the same command. And then we'll, that way we'll be confident that, that we've got it. And I'm going to go delete my token that I just shared publicly. All right, good. So the recording of that token doesn't matter now because it's no longer valid in GitHub. So I'm assuming you're able to see my screen. I am, yes. Awesome. So there should be here. Eight. Right. So it looks like it started, that's good. Nice. Yep, done, I think. So did it work? Or it is working? Excellent, okay, very good. Great. So I, I think I'll take take it over from here so that okay. you don't waste your time. Great. Well, thank you very much for doing it. Sorry you bumped into this challenge. Actually, while we're here, mm -hmm. let's have you give a review of 
that pull request that I just submitted. So I'm going to paste the pull request ID into our chat window in. And now if you could open this in your web browser. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and then if you want to just review it and give your approval. Okay. So for that, so what I you need... do is in the top right hand, or the top, there's files changed a lot. Yep. So below the, so click that. Okay. And what it will show you is the differences. And then, and you see minus e lang c dash u dot utf dash eight. So the three changes we, we made, the top right hand corner has a green button review changes. Top right, yes. Click that. Cl click the approve checkbox. Okay. And usually I like to put a comment up there, something in this case, probably something uh, reviewed during doc's office hours. that correct? Yeah, that, that's good enough. And then click submit with the submit review button. So what you just did is you've said, I have reviewed this change. And since you've used it and confirmed it works, I feel pretty good that that we can say yes, it's been reviewed. And then what we have to do is find somebody else who can actually merge that. Right. So anyone can re uh, review PRs, I thought you need to have some privileges. No, no. You, in fact, it's quite valuable. You can review PRs. What you cannot do is you can't merge them. Oh. And so, so you, you have permission to give comments and say, hey, this looks good to me. And, and you see over on the right hand side, your name is there with a checkbox that says having re has reviewed it. And right. it's quite valuable to have people who review things because it's, it takes us a lot of time to do reviews. So having one more reviewers is a, a reviewer is a big win. That's really great. Something I learned now. Okay, so we've got we've got that set. So let's let's switch. I guess we should probably switch back to our agenda and sure. see if there are other topics to to bring. Okay, so I'm going to switch and share my screen. Okay, so, whoops, we should make a note here, CPR, where did I put the pull <laughs> Oh, excuse me, dear, ah, sorry. Ah, here we go. This one, PR 15. All right, good. Anything else on the 2.305 change log? I assume that you'll work through it and after you're done with it, we'll get it reviewed and merged. Definitely, yes, thanks. Okay, so change log automation. Um, I'm sorry, I have, Mark has not yet reviewed the, reviewed the PR. Uh, Daniel Beck, expressed his thanks that uh, others are willing to be involved, review and revise. So that was a good sign. I think we've overcome his concern that change log automation would cause the, the change log to be worse, not better. And That's I assume- really nice. I, Are you still willing to be a reviewer and, and part of it? I assume you are, Diraj. Yes, sure. Excellent, thank you, very good, okay. So next piece is the 2.302.1 LTS change log and the backports have, uh, no backports have been proposed yet. 
and an error was detected in the definition of the branch. And this is a, is a good story to show. I'm gonna show you what, what it looks like now and why we'll have to fix it. So is the text on the screen big enough now to read? Yes. Okay, good. So let's go to the Jenkins repository and I've got a command that I use called git log dash a git alias and we can see aliases. No. There's this command I use that helps me visualize. It's git log minus minus graph minus pretty equals one line a brief commit decorate. So let's use that. And what that shows us is, okay, here is the master branch. The red is remote branches. The green is local branches. This is the SHA-1 and the, the graph thing here, the edges of the graph are showing which things are parents and which are children. Um, and what we see here is if we look, you see here's the tag Jenkins-2.304, right? Jenkins-2.302 or 303, 2.302. But as we continue backwards, I think we will find, no, let's see, stable-2.302. Nope, okay. Here we go, we'll look at it this way. So two dot stable 2.302 is this upstream branch. So here's the upstream branch, but if we look at this history, there is something going on here that's caused it to be based on the wrong location. So here is Jenkins, the tag for Jenkins 2.299. And stable 302 should be based on 302, not on something prior to 2.299. So Daniel's detected, and, and I agree with him, the branch is defined incorrectly. And so we need to fix that and define the branch correctly so that it's based on, a, on, the, on the correct version of Jenkins 2.302, which is right here. So that's nothing you or I can do, but that's something that the release, the, the release lead will need to do. And so I'm not gonna to attempt to generate the change log until that's done. We could look, we can certainly look at the things that have changed in the, uh, in the actual change logs themselves, but, oh, hey, that's great. I have permission to merge this. Hey, and you've approved it. So I'm going to go ahead and merge it. Okay, done and delete the branch. So back to our change log generator. So we've got to do, we need to be based on the correct branch. Uh, branch point before we write the change log. So like, how did this happen? Like automatically or just by mistake? Human error. Yeah, the, the release lead just made a mistake in defining the branch. And I, it's happened before, so it's not a shock. Usually the way, the way the branch should be defined, I believe is by looking for the Jenkins-2.302 tag and then going one commit after it. And that would be the place where you would put the, put the branch point, base it off of that. And so if we said checkout minus B stable dash 2.302 
track upstream slash stable dash 2.302. Okay, and then get reset minus minus hard and point it here. Now it will tell us just how different they are. So get status says there are 54 branches on one leg or 54 commits on one leg and 13 different commits on another. They are clearly, it's the branch is clearly not where it should be. Oh, right. Okay. So, all right, so we'll hold, hold on the change log generation until next week or later. All right. Also, how much time will it take for me to get? You on the you know, you know all the commands and you are running it like it's English for you. <laughs> so any tips on that? Uh, on, on using Git, that kind of thing? Yeah, but because uh, you use it like your, uh, it's like plain English for you. So you do it really quickly and you do it. Uh, uh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and that's, that's more, a, that's more a result of lots of damage from having spent a long time doing git commands. So you should mm -hmm. you should not not that's neither is that a goal nor particularly helpful for you. If you find it helpful that's great, but for most people they just learn and correctly use a small set of git commands and that's more than good enough. Right, makes sense. <laughs> so if now if 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 you take a job as a release engineer or as a branch master or something like that You'll 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 develop it just because there's no avoiding it. Right, right. All right, good. So we've got we've got that part. The ch LTS change log is is on hold. So the jock the JDK eleven Docker transition. Mark needs to finish the JEP. Finish the Jenkins. The Jenkins enhancement proposal still needs a number of a number of hours of writing several more hours before it's ready to submit but the um, let's see the coding is in progress for to improve docker image generation Back tomorrow's or today's, the next weekly is scheduled to deliver a multi-architecture Docker image. Which means if we're lucky, it will run on AMD 64, the current, ARM 64, PowerPC 64, and System 390X. And that's from a single image. So really excited about that one because that gives us flexibility with which computing platform we use. In particular, ARM64 is a, a lower cost computing platform on a number of the cloud providers. Oh, so I, I didn't know that we had some restrictions to hardware previously. Yeah, the, the, the Docker images only today only run on AMD64. And so this is, this is giving us, a, this if it's successful tomorrow, will give us additional uh, images or additional facilities inside the existing images. And so um, a user will log into their ARM computer and just type the command docker run Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest and it will run run on ARM. Whereas today it, it just fails. Wow, so then this will be really helpful. 
I, I, we hope so. Yeah, I, it's been on our roadmap for quite a while, and it's really exciting that Tim Jacome and Damien Duportal have made such great progress on it. They've made the build process from two to five times faster. Uh, the build and test process is two to five times faster, and they've added these additional capabilities. Wow, that's amazing. Uh-huh. All right, any questions on the Java 11 transition? No, nothing from my side. All right, so let's let's talk about the one that should probably spend most of our time, and this is Hacktoberfest. So I have not yet reviewed the materials from last year to get started. Maybe we can, you and I can start that right now, Jenkins Hacktoberfest, and see if we can find it. Okay, Hacktoberfest and Jenkins, the FAQ. Okay. All right, there's one. And then the Jenkins event kit. And because we'll probably be remote here, I don't know that now then we've got Hacktoberfest 2019 blog. Okay, then we've got 2017. And somehow I'll bet there's a 2018 blog as well. And if I just look for the keyword Hacktoberfest, Jenkins, there it is, 2018. Okay. Okay, and it looks like we may not have either. We didn't blog about it in 2020 or we did not have a the tag applied. Okay, so here we've got Beijing, Nice, Jenkins Online Meetups, 18, 19, ah, there we go. It's in the New Year report, okay. Event kit, F oh, oh, and we need Hacktoberfest. My mistake, of course. Is that in events? No, yes, that is, okay. Oh, right, right, right. About event, no, where are our events? Here they are, events. And, oh, that's a little frustrating, no link to this. Here we go, okay, Hacktoberfest. Okay, so this tells people how to get started, talks about the JIRA issues, featured projects, which we need to get featured projects, that's good, and good first issues. Hey, that's not a bad collection, Diraj, look at that. We've got 14 open good first issues. Now, in the past, we've liked to have 30 to 50 but just having 14 is already pretty good. 
on the Jenkins core, we've got 54. That's good. The Jenkins plugin site may have, yes, it has two. Okay, good. All right, so we've got, and Jenkins file runner has some. Tecton client plugin has a pair. Very good. Okay, so this is looking promising. Uh, we don't have, yeah, okay, no, no good first issues there. Okay, so let's see if we can find the, the Hacktoberfest retrospective from last year. No, I'm not seeing it. Okay, oh, hey, there's a nice blog post from Andrea Musap. Okay. Good. All right. So and I'll have to go looking for to find the uh, Oktoberfest retrospective. I don't see it immediately. Diraj, I apologize that I'm not as organized for the Hacktoberfest conversation as I should be. Any insights you'd like to offer or suggestions there on how we approach this? Our next, our next meeting of advocacy and outreach, I believe, is in two weeks. Is that right? Yeah, so it's, it's the 12th. And that that may be good enough for our next conversation. So let me get started on, on a community.jenkins.io location and on a document to talk about how we'll do this. I assume you're willing to, you're willing to collaborate with me on that document as we try to, try to describe how we approach it. Sure, definitely. Great, all right, excellent. Thank you. Um, that's, that's all that I had for today. Any other topics you wanted to bring? No, nothing from my side. All right. Have a great day, Diraj. Thanks very much. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.